Welcome to the Center for Quantum Devices, or the CQD. This Northwestern University Independent Research Center was founded by CQD Director and Walter P. Murphy Professor Manish Rizegi. She joined Northwestern University in 1991 and from nothing has put together a comprehensive world-class facility to address all aspects of semiconductor research from device modeling to material growth, material characterization, device processing, device measurement, and systems fabrication. The CQD occupies a total of 8,000 square feet of laboratory and office space. 3,000 square feet of this total are clean room space in Cook Hall, an additional 3,500 square feet of general laboratory space, and 1,500 square feet of office space are located in Cook Hall and across the courtyard in the Technological Institute. There are three metal organic chemical vapor deposition or MOCBD systems and two molecular beam epitaxy or MBE systems available for material growth. An FRL horizontal flow MSCVD is available for the growth of arsenic and phosphorus based 3,5 compounds. It is a horizontal flow reactor with a maximum temperature of 900 degrees C and is used with samples with an area up to 10 square centimeters. An MCOR Discovery 125 low pressure MOCVD system is available for the growth of arsenic, phosphorus, and intimidite based 3,5 compounds. It is a vertical flow MOCVD reactor which can operate at pressures between 40 and 500 torr and can be resistance heated at temperatures up to 900 degrees Celsius. The susceptor disc is rotated at speeds up to 2,000 RPM to ensure high uniformity of the epitaxial layer over wafers up to 5 inches in diameter. An Axtron 200-4 RF MOC reactor is dedicated to the growth of three nitride and gallium oxide-based compound semiconductors. This system is of a horizontal flow design with a rotating susceptible capable of 2-inch, 3-inch, or 4-inch wafer growth, and it is capable of growing at temperatures up to 1200 degrees Celsius. A gas source MBE system, an InterVac Mod Gen 2, is dedicated to the growth of arsenic and phosphorus-based 3,5 compounds. The reactor has six furnaces containing the Group 3 N-type and P-type dopant elemental sources, as well as four gas injectors with crackers for the Group 5 elements. This MBE reactor is capable of growing uniform 3-inch diameter wafers, in situ characterizations including reflectance, high energy electron diffraction, or READ, and residual gas analysis, or RGA, allow real time monitoring and precise control of the growth conditions. A second solid source MB system, also an InterVac Mod Gen 2, is dedicated to the growth of arsenic and intimidite based compounds. This reactor has eight furnaces containing the Group 3, N type, and P type dopant elemental sources and Group 5 elements. This MB reactor is also capable of growing uniform 3 inch diameter wafers and has the same in situ characterization capabilities. In addition to the material growth, the clean room also contains a comprehensive material characterization suite. Structural characterization is performed using a computer controlled Philips high resolution 3 crystal 5 reflection X ray diffractometer. There's also software capable of performing dynamical X ray simulations. General surface characterization is performed using Hitachi S4500 cold field emission scanning electron microscope with EDX capabilities. Equipment for optical characterization includes an infrared photoluminescence system using a green argon ion laser. The signal can either be corrected with a monochromatter or with a microscope and camera to measure the topographical photoluminescence. In the ultraviolet, photoluminescence is done using either an argon fluoride excimer laser at 193 nanometers, a frequency doubled continuous wave argon ion laser emitting at 244 nanometers, or a continuous wave helium cadmium laser at 325 nanometers. A Zygo NuView 7300 optical profiler can also be used to create topographical maps of wafers and fabricated devices. Electrical characterizations can be performed using an electrochemical capacitance voltage measurement system. This system selectively measures the carrier concentration and then etches a sample in order to create a profile of the carrier concentration as a function of depth. A Digital Instruments Dimension 3100 scanning probe microscope provides high resolution three dimensional images of sample surfaces. This can be imaged in several modes, including atomic force microscopy or FM, scanning tunneling microscope or STM, or physical force imaging, magnetic force imaging, or electric force imaging, among many others. Electrical characterizations are also performed using a Hall Effect measurement system set up for four point Van de Paul measurements with a 0.32 Tesla magnet, a precision current source with a 100 volt compliance voltage, and sensitive electrometers to measure the Hall voltage from even the most resistive samples. Now we'll move on to the device processing capabilities of the CQD cleanroom. Processing and support facilities for device fabrication include a number of fume hoods for sample preparation, general chemical processing, and photoresist developing. 
There's a hood dedicated specifically for photo resist spinning with an adjustable vacuum spin deposition and two precision hot plates, one for soft and one for hard baking of the photo resist layers. A Carl Seuss MJB3 contact mask aligner is used to do alignment and exposure of the photo resist. This system is capable of micrometer level resolution. Testing development can be studied using an optical Normoski microscope that is equipped for both bright and dark field measurements. The system has an image capture capability that allows us to record images as well for documenting our process development. In addition to wet chemical etching, semiconductor layers are plasma etched using a plasma term SLR770 series electron cyclotron resonance reactive ion etching system or ECRIRE. We also have an Oxford Plasma Lab System 100 Inductile Kufel Plasma Reactive Ion Etcher, or ICPRAE. Both of these systems are capable of highly anisotropic etching of semiconductor materials. The cleanroom also houses an SCT FC150 dye bonder for the advanced slip chip bonding and hybridization of lasers. This system has been specifically configured with the solder reflow arm as well as formic acid and forming gas delivery systems for discrete devices. Die sizes up to 22 millimeters square can be accommodated with high bonding accuracy and less than half a micron reproducibility in the alignment. An electron beam evaporator is used to deposit various metals onto semiconductor films for the realization of ohmic and shocky metal contacts. The system incorporates a four pocket crucible as well as a secondary thermal evaporation source that can be used to deposit gold germanium. It is also equipped with a Vico Mark I in situ argon plasma cleaning system that's available to repair the surface prior to metallization. This cleaner space is supported by two mechanical chases. The first houses support equipment for the MSU reactors and the semiconductor spray cleaning system, as well as assortment of spare parts for the MSU reactors. The second chase is used to store spare parts for the MB systems. There are also several cabinets located in the facility that are used to store additional parts, as well as samples and other materials necessary for the operations of the CQD. This concludes the tour of the cleaner facility. However, for every square foot of cleaner space, there's at least an additional square foot of support space. We're going to quickly run upstairs and look at some of the cleaner support equipment. The secure cleaner penthouse houses a hydrogen generator that supplies the hydrogen needs of the facility, as well as a two-hour backup provided by cylinders. There's also a high purity deionized water system. High purity deionized water is provided to all the wet benches at a resistance of greater than 17 mega ohms and a particle size of less than 250 nanometers. The clean room also has a dedicated process chilled water loop that's isolated from the rest of the building supply that's used to cool all of the internal components that require cooling within the clean room. There's also a dedicated exhaust fan for the toxic gas scrubbers. This exhaust fan is monitored to make sure that we're not releasing toxic gas into the environment. There's a nitrogen generator that supplies low purity nitrogen to the toxic gas scrubber and some of the other equipment within the clean room. Next to the nitrogen generator is the toxic gas scrubber. The toxic gas scrubber burns all of the effluent from the MOCVD and the gas source MB reactor in order to render it inert prior to rejecting it from the roof of the building via the scrubber exhaust fan shown previously. Toxic gases are stored in a secure vault in the penthouse. We have a number of toxic gases that are rather hazardous and all of these are stored in this ventilated space in the penthouse and then delivered downstairs to the coaxial double wall lines. There's also a chemical storage room for storage of general solvents and other chemicals used in the processing of silicon devices. This is one of the four clean room circulating fans that are responsible for maintaining the integrity of the clean room with regards to particle count, temperature control, and humidity control. So that concludes our tour of the Cook Hall penthouse. Now we're gonna go back downstairs and I'm gonna show you the Cook Hall laser lab. This lab is dedicated to back-end device processing and device testing. Around the periphery of the room, we have a semi-automated dye bonder with an inspection camera for high-precision epi-down bonding of lasers and LEDs to pattern submounts. We also have a manual dye bonder for more general purpose bonding. We have a wax mounting system to attach samples to glass carriers for lapping and polishing, as well as the thickness meter to characterize the material remover rate achieved via lapping and polishing. There are two vacuum ovens that are used for degassing of epoxy and vacuum potting of various samples. We use a semi-automated wire bonder and one mil gold wire to wire bond our devices to contact pads that lead frames and leadless ceramic chip carriers. We have a Logitech precision lapping system with automatic slurry feed and a precision lapping head for wafers up to three inches in diameter. This is a Loomis semi-automated scribe and brake cleaving system that can be used for dye singulation, laser cavity formation, and other separation of dyes. We have a second wire bonder equipped with an extended reach tool to allow wire bonding of high aspect ratio packages. This wire bonder also supports ribbon bonding for high current devices. 
A heat pulse rapid thermal annealing system is used to alloy metal contacts or activate the doping of semiconductor thin films. This system is capable of going from room temperature to 1000 degrees in less than 10 seconds, and with a low thermal mass chuck, it can cool back down almost as quickly. An automated KNS 7100 dicing system uses diamond wheel saw to realize controlled, fine, and accurate cuts into semiconductor wafers. This system is particularly well suited to the dicing of readout integrated circuits, focal plane arrays, and light emitting diodes. The backside of the lab is dedicated to systems fabrication. The CQD has developed a number of complex embedded systems that incorporate our various semiconductor devices. We have a dedicated soldering station as well as benchtop electrical characterization equipment. We also have a large inventory of various semiconductor devices that can be incorporated into these various embedded systems. The center of the room is dedicated to device characterization. We have an SEIR camera system for the characterization of our focal plane arrays. There is a CI system's extended area block body we use for radiometric characterization up to 50 degrees C. We also have a one inch aperture IR system block body that goes up to 1000 degrees Celsius and can be used for additional radiometric characterization of our focal plane arrays. There's another optical light microscope with video capture capabilities that's used for inspection of various semiconductor devices. This setup is used for room temperature characterization of detectors ranging from the deep ultraviolet all the way to 1.55 microns. There's a xenon lamp and monochromator for illumination of samples. We also have both electrical probes as well as fiber optic probes for top and back illumination of devices. There's electronics for measuring simple IV curves as well as RF electronics and sources for the characterization of high speed photodetector devices. This setup is for the characterization of infrared lasers from three microns all the way to the terahertz. We have a vacuum FTR, as well as various laser mounts, laser driver electronics, and electronic instrumentation to measure the devices. This FTR is unique in that it's equipped with a bolometer cooled down to liquid helium temperatures that allows measurements all the way out to the terahertz. There is a second IR laser characterization setup. We also have a second FTIR. However, this system is unique in that it has a two-axis goniometer that can be used to measure various laser properties as a function of emission angles. There's also a microbolometer camera to observe the laser emission pattern in real time. In support of all of this equipment, we have several cabinets with different optics and other optomechanical components to allow us to do a variety of advanced semiconductor device measurements. So this concludes our tour of the laser lab. Now we're going to go across the courtyard to the Technological Institute. The CQ has additional lab space and office space in the Technological Institute. The lab space includes a fourth MOS2 reactor. This is Professor Rizegi's reactor that she brought with her from France, having used this reactor to develop some of the very first 1.3 and 1.55 micron telecommunications back in the 80s. This is an Oxford Instruments dual beam ion beam deposition system that's used to deposit various optical thin films. The system has a turret for the deposition of multiple composition stacks, as well as a secondary ion beam that is directed at the wafer that allows for the deposition with very high plasma temperatures at the surface, but wafer temperatures near room temperature. A gas mixing cabinet allows for gas injection to attain more stoichiometric films. This system is supported by dedicated optical thin film characterization equipment, including an FTIR for transmission and reflection measurements, and an ellipsometer to attract real and complex indices of refraction from thin films. There's a semi-automatic thermal evaporator dedicated to the evaporation of indium. This system operates under computer control and supervision, allowing for thick films taking more than eight hours to be carefully and slowly deposited. This is particularly useful for the realization of India bumps and the patterning of laser submounts. There's also a second electron beam evaporator for the deposition of metals for ohmic and shocky contacts. This system is unique in that it also has a heater and gas injection system that allows for the electron beam evaporation of oxide materials. In this support chase, the CQD has a small machine shop with a Tormach PCNC 770 fully computer controlled mill with a large selection of CNC tooling. This is used to fabricate prototype systems as well as maintain and repair the CQD's various pieces of equipment. There's also a manual drill press, a bandsaw. This room also has an explosion resistant refrigerator for the storage of flammable chemicals. And a large inventory of stop for rapid prototyping of various projects. A closet with spare parts and a small tabletop lathe. There are also toxic gas cabinets to support the various other equipment in the lab. This room is dedicated to the electrical and optical characterization of semiconductor devices. There's another FTR and cryostat for the automatic testing of many arrays of devices. Through a switch matrix, this system can characterize 32 devices with a single cooldown. 
There's also a more manual FTR and block body for manual measurement of different devices using probes. We also store a wide variety of different samples over the years we've done in this room. This room also houses another wire bonder that is used to bond devices to the 64-pin leadless ceramic chip carriers that are used for testing with the switch matrix. There's an automatic life testing system that we use to do burn and test on lasers as well as extended life testing under various conditions. Finally, this room has a second X-ray diffraction system. This BD1 system is used for more complex analytical scans and allows the main system in the clean room to better support the growth. By having a second system, we can do 24-hour scans or triple axis scans to acquire high-resolution reciprocal space maps. Now, moving across the lab back to the other side, we have a second support chase. This chase has storage for large spare parts, as well as a UPS, a nitrogen generator, several more toxic gas cabinets, and a toxic gas scrubber and a nitrogen cylinder bank. The final room in the tech facility is a yellow room for additional lithographic processing of semiconductor wafers. There's an Oxford Systems Plasma Enhanced Chemical Vapor Deposition, or PCVD system, for the deposition of silicon dioxide and silicon nitride. We have a custom holographic lithography setup based on a HECAD laser and a Lloyd's mirror arrangement that's available for periodic gradient formation. In the center of the room, we have a Leica Lion LV1 electron beam lithography system capable of fabrication of sub 30 nanometer structures and semiconductor materials. This system can be used to rapidly fabricate periodic and non periodic optical gradients, as well as more complex photonic crystal structures. There's also a Carl Seuss MA6 contact mask aligner with the submicron feature resolution and wafer back and front side alignment capabilities. One hood is dedicated to the spinning of photo and e-beam resist as well as hard and soft baking. The second hood is dedicated to the development of the photo and e-beam resist.